Hey guys, Dr. Alex Tatum here. Today, I wanna to talk about one of the most exciting developments that's happening in the field of erectile dysfunction treatment right now, and that's shockwave therapy. At Urology of Indiana, this is known as U-Wave. Now, despite the name, shockwave therapy actually has nothing to do with electricity or anything most people would consider to be a shock. In fact, it seems to be an almost painless way for certain men to improve their erections without pills, shots, or a procedure in the operating room. But how much of this is real and how much of it is just hype? There is a lot of information to cover here today. So let's jump right into things on season one, episode four of The Man Cave. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Alex Tatum, and I'm a fellowship trained urologist specializing in male, sexual, and reproductive medicine. Along with my partner, Dr. Jason Kovac, we run the Men's Health Center at Urology of Indiana, which is the region's largest men's health clinic. Our entire practice is completely dedicated to helping men that are struggling with issues like erectile dysfunction, problems with fertility, low testosterone, and Peyronie's disease. Now onto our topic of the day, shockwave therapy for erectile dysfunction. Let's start with the basics. What is it? Shockwave therapy for ED is a promising new therapy that uses pulsed acoustic energy waves to improve blood flow and increase natural erectile function. It's been making a lot of waves here recently and for good reason, but the technology that it's based on has actually been around for quite some time. A quick history lesson. Shockwave therapy was originally developed in Germany and was first used to treat kidney stones in the mid 1980s. In 1984, Dr. Jim Lingeman, who was one of my mentors, first used the Dornier HM3 lithotriptor to break up a man's kidney stones right here in Indianapolis. For the first time, doctors were able to treat a kidney stone without any cuts or incisions. This was the first time shockwave therapy was used in the United States and it completely revolutionized kidney stone treatment. Now this was a very early form of the technology and it used very high energy sound waves. It couldn't treat all stones and patients actually had to be lowered into a bathtub where the water could conduct the shock waves from the generator to the patient. The technology has advanced exponentially in the decades since then. Using much lower energy, orthopedic surgeons found that shock waves could reduce inflammation in the muscles and joints. In the early 2000s, cardiologists began studying shockwave therapy for its ability to regenerate blood vessels. And in the 2010s, this found its way into sexual medicine and erectile dysfunction. This makes sense. Although ED can also be caused by nerve damage, like with prostate removal, hormonal problems, or emotional stress, the overriding majority of erectile dysfunction is caused by problems with the blood vessels that supply the penis. After all, how do all the medications used to treat ED work? They do so by improving blood flow. But how does shockwave therapy work? A quick aside, if you haven't watched it yet, I would strongly recommend that you take the time to watch one of our previous videos where we talk about how erections are supposed to work and how they can break. This provides a great foundation as we start to talk about the theory behind how Shockwave is thought to work. That video will be in the top right hand corner of your screen. The main portion of the machine, known as a generator, creates low intensity acoustic shockwaves that are delivered via the handpiece. This is then transmitted through a gel to the tissue that's being treated. When these shock waves are applied to the erectile bodies of the penis, also known as the corpora cavernosa, they produce a healing response that promotes better blood flow and ultimately better erections. Now this doesn't happen overnight. The shock waves themselves aren't thought to improve blood flow on their own. Rather, it's the body's healing response that is believed to make the difference. Consequently, most men don't report seeing the full benefit of their shockwave therapy until some time following treatment. Shockwave therapy has been studied extensively in multiple randomized clinical trials. These are studies that compared men who actually received treatment to men who thought they were receiving treatment, but really weren't. The machine made the same sound, but the energy wasn't delivered. Generally speaking, 60 to 70% of men experienced a treatment success. This meant that six to seven out of 10 men experienced an improvement in their erections that was determined to be clinically significant in a way that made a real difference in their lives. In order to better quantify this, a questionnaire known as the SHIM score was frequently used. This is a five question, 25 point questionnaire that men fill out and assigns a score to their level of erectile function. Lower scores mean worse ED. On average, men undergoing shockwave therapy experienced about a four to five point improvement in their SHIM score, with some studies reporting even greater gains. Practically, this means a lot of men who are requiring oral medications like Viagra or Cialis didn't need them as much, while other men who had stopped responding to these medications were able to start using them again. And each of these studies reported zero adverse side effects. That's something that no other therapy for ED can claim. This means to date, shockwave therapy appears to be the safest treatment option for ED that we've ever had. So how long does it last? 
One of the drawbacks of these studies is that not many of them showed long-term follow-up. The ones that did show that anywhere from 50 to 60% of men reported a sustained benefit one year following treatment. One really well done study showed that 50% of men still reported a benefit two years following treatment. So if you don't respond to an initial series of treatments, or you do, but you lose those gains later on in life, can you be retreated? Yes, but the benefit isn't well defined yet. There's really only one study that looked at repeating treatment ranging from a total of six treatments up to 18. This showed that each extra six treatments increased a man's chance of responding by about 10%, but it's hard to draw conclusions from just one study. So what's the catch? There's gotta be a catch, right? Well, there are a few things that men thinking about pursuing shockwave therapy should consider. Shockwave works best in men with mild to moderate erectile dysfunction. This typically means men who have ED but don't need oral medications like Viagra, men with ED who still get a good response to these medicines, and men who have only recently stopped responding to them. Men who have progressed to injections or haven't had a good erection for years may be less likely to respond. Also, shockwave therapy is designed to treat vascular ED. This means that men with a significant nerve component to their ED may be unlikely to respond. This includes men that have had pelvic surgery like prostate removal for prostate cancer or bladder removal for bladder cancer. This also includes men who have had spinal cord injuries. Now, so far there haven't been any studies looking at shockwaves effects in men with ED stemming from radiation therapy for prostate cancer. But based on what we know from that disease process, many experts, including myself, are uncertain about its ability to significantly improve erections for these men. Now, if you're one of these men that I just mentioned, this doesn't mean that you can't receive shockwave therapy. Shockwave is incredibly safe, but every man deserves to know his chances before pursuing treatment. One thing that we can't not talk about is the difference between true focused shockwave therapy, which is what we've been talking about, and radial wave therapy. Unfortunately, not all shockwave machines are created equal, and there's a lot of misinformation out there. For reference, every bit of information that I've mentioned so far is about focused shockwave therapy. This is important because focused shockwave devices deliver a very particular energy pattern. As you can see, focused shockwaves have a steep energy spike, followed by a refractory period where there is a brief moment of negative pressure. This actually allows the cells being treated to contract and then expand. This is the action that is thought to prompt the changes that improve erectile function. Also, the energy pulses from focused shockwave devices can reach deep into tissue, allowing them to actually reach the erectile tissue that we're trying to treat. Radio wave devices, on the other hand, look almost identical to focused shockwave devices, but deliver a very different energy pattern. As you can see, there is no spike or negative pressure moment. This fails to cause the change on a cellular level that is thought to be essential for shockwave to work. These devices also have very shallow tissue penetration. If you were to see one of them in action, they look like a massage gun or a jackhammer, but they fail to transmit energy deep enough to affect the erectile tissues themselves. Some of them can also be uncomfortable and actually require patients to be numbed prior to treatment. As a patient, this can be confusing because the overwhelming majority of men's clinics are actually offering radio wave therapy and not true focused shockwave treatments. The simple fact is that radio wave devices are a lot cheaper than focused shockwave devices, and these clinics can take advantage of the fact that most patients won't know the difference. But don't be fooled. As of this recording, there is zero compelling data showing that radio wave devices have any sort of benefit for the treatment of erectile dysfunction. But how can patients know the difference? Simple, ask what machine the practice is using. Although the studies I mentioned earlier use several different focus machines, including the Metaspec ED1000, the Dornier Ares 2, the Stortz Duolith SD1, and the Direx Renova and Mornova, there is currently only one machine that's available for use in the United States outside of a clinical trial. That device is the Stortz Duolith SD1, which is the device that we use at my practice. This is not to be confused with the Stortz D-Actor, which is a radio wave device that looks similar, but is not the same. Now, most clinics will have their own names for their shockwave programs, like we do with U-Wave, but you should always ask what is the name of the actual machine that is being used. Brand names like Gainswave don't refer to a physical device. Those are marketing terms. Gainswave in particular uses almost exclusively radio wave devices because of their reduced cost. As of this moment, if a clinic inside the United States is using something besides the Stortz Duolith SD1 and they're not conducting a free research trial, then they're not offering the real type of shockwave therapy that's been shown to be beneficial for erectile dysfunction. The same thing is true for all the personal devices that are sold for at-home use by men. They're simply not the real thing. So what is U-Wave then? U-Wave is Urology of Indiana's name for our own shockwave program. 
Using the Stortz Duolith SD1, patients receive a series of outpatient treatments, each lasting less than 30 minutes. There is zero downtime, zero pain, and no restrictions following treatment. Most men will experience their greatest improvements in the weeks following treatment. We have been really encouraged about the results we've seen so far, and we're excited to expand availability of what we believe to be a game changer for men suffering from mild to moderate vascular ED. So in summary, who is Shockwave best suited for? Shockwave is best for men that meet the following criteria. Number one, men with mild to moderate ED. As I mentioned earlier, this is something that can be assessed with the SHIM questionnaire, but typically describes men who either don't need oral medication, men who are still using oral medication and getting a good response, or men who have just recently stopped responding to oral medication. Number two, no nerve component. This means men without a known nerve injury that could be potentially contributing to their erectile dysfunction. Some examples of nerve injury include prostate removal for prostate cancer, bladder removal for bladder cancer, and spinal cord injury. Number three, men with a good understanding of their chance for success. Men should remember that the success rate for shockwave therapy is around 60 to 70%, but it's not guaranteed. Also, success doesn't mean that a man's erections will automatically return to how they were when he was a teenager. They might, but even if his improvement is just enough so he's able to start using oral medication again when it wasn't working previously, that's a huge win. Now, if the things I just listed don't seem to describe you, or if you have more questions about Shockwave or any of the other fantastic treatment options we have for ED, I would encourage you to schedule a consultation either with myself or my partner, Dr. Jason Kovac at the Men's Health Center. Come see what a personalized approach to men's health can do for you and your personal life. Check out the link to our website down below to learn more. You can even request an appointment electronically so you don't even have to pick up the phone. If you like this video, make sure to click that like button, subscribe for more content, and hit that notification bell. So have you or anyone you know ever tried shockwave therapy? What was your experience like? Sound off in the comments down below. If you wanna learn more about how erections work and our other treatment options for ED, including the penile implant, check the description down below for links to our previous videos. Until next time, this is Dr. Alex Tatum, signing off from the Man Cave.